All right, guys, in the last video, we went ahead and set things up and we created our nav bar. We added a, we added a little bit of custom styling to make the background dark and the border and a border on our nav bar. Now we're going to work on the big home section or the showcase section. And what I'm going to do is just bring over the finished product so I can kind of show you what what it is we're doing. So we're going to do this area and it's going to have a background image. Okay, but we also want to have an overlay over this image because if we keep the image at its at its nav natural brightness, I guess the text will be hard to read. So we want to add a dark overlay and we're going to do that with just CSS. Another thing I want to mention is we're using the grid here. So this will be eight columns and four columns on a large screen. But once we go under a large screen, let me just detach this so I can show you if it will detach what is going on here. That's weird. Okay. Um, now, if I make this smaller, once it goes below large, you'll see that it just is the sign up form. Okay, so that's the mobile view, the tablet view. Um, and that's what I wanted to do because it looks a little weird if we keep the text, um, if we keep the text on the side here. I also didn't want to put it above or below that the text isn't that important. So you could kind of think of this as a mobile first design where this is the main the main look, but we added the extra bonus of this this text here on bigger screens. Okay, so just be aware that that that's how we're going to do this. So let's go over to VS Code. And we're going to um, we'll go right below the nav tag that we did in the last video. I'm going to put a comment and say home section. Now, I usually like to use the section tag to break things up, but if it's like a, a main showcase area at the top, I'll use the head, the HTML5 header tag. And I'm going to give this an ID of home dash section. And inside here is where we want to put our class for the overlay. So I'm going to call this dark dash overlay. And then inside the dark overlay is where we want to put a class called home dash inner. Okay, home inner is basically going to be the content. So this here, the image goes all the way across. So that'll be attached to the actual home section. And then we have the dark overlay, which goes all the way across. But everything within the home inner, we actually want to have a container around. So I'm going to add that as well. You could do that or you could actually put another div with a container class in here, but it will save us a div if we just add it there. And then we want to use the grid. So remember, we have the eight and four column on large screen. So let's do row. OK, we need a row here and let's do call dash uh, LG dash eight. So that'll do an eight column div on large screens, but I don't want this to show on anything less than a large screen. So we want to add the class of D none, which is actually display none. So if I leave it as is, it's going to just not show at all, whatever we put in this div. So we want to add one more class called D dash LG dash block. So that will display it as a block on large screens. OK, so it'll be none by default, but when it hits large, it will display. So let's go ahead and hit tab. And now inside here is where we want the whole left side with all the text and stuff. So we're going to have an H1 and I'm going to give this a display for class and I'm going to say build social profiles and gain uh, revenue. We'll say revenue profits and then I'm just going to wrap social profiles in strong tags. Which I'll just. All right, we just want to make sure that this wraps around social profiles. And let's also do profits as well. We'll wrap that in strong tags. OK, so that's our H1. Now, underneath the H1 is where we want to put these three areas with the icon and the text. And we're actually going to use Flexbox for this. Remember, we, we went over the Deflex class um, and we had the alignment classes and stuff. We're going to use that right here. And just to show you what it looks like so far, I'm going to save this 
and we'll go back to our version and you can see it's it's still under the nav bar it doesn't look very good we still have quite a bit to do and we have some custom css to do as well so underneath the h1 let's put a div with the class of deflex okay and deflex will automatically align it horizontally and then uh, we want to add a div here with the class of p-4 i want padding for padding around everything and then we also want to align self start to align it to the beginning and this is going to be where the icon goes so we're using font awesome it should be included up above if you use the boiler which is right here font awesome and they're going to be those little those check mark icons so we're going to put an i tag with the class of fa actually let's do fas and also the class of fa dash check and then i want it to be a little bigger than normal so i'm going to add the class of fa dash 2x and these are all font awesome classes all right now inside this deflex we want to put another div remember deflex is going to make everything in it align this way horizontally so we'll have the check and then we'll have the text so we want to put another div with the class of p4 and we want to align this to the end so align self end and then we'll just say lorem let's do lorem 15 and save and let's see what that looks like and you can see that now we have the checkbox so this is the deflex it made it go this way instead of putting the text under and we also added padding for around each of these we align this to self start so that's why it's aligned on this side and this is on self end so it's aligned on this side all right so hopefully that makes sense and you can see exactly what those classes are doing all right and don't don't worry about this being under the nav bar or anything like that yet we'll get to that So let's finish the other two. Basically, we're going to copy this whole deflex area, which is the icon and the text, and we're going to paste it in one, uh, two, three. So there should be three all together. And we don't have to change anything. It's all the same icon. We'll keep the same text. That's fine. Okay. So now we want to go underneath the column right here, the eight column div. So that ends right here. and then let's put our our four column div so call on lg on large screens four meaning that under large screens it's just going to stack to to go all the way across now remember we want this to show on every screen so we're not going to do the stuff we did with like the d none and dlg block it's just going to always be a four column div uh so in here is where we want basically that form so just to show you this part here which is going to be wrapped in a card it's going to have a background color we'll put a couple form fields a button some text so let's do that so let's see under the lg4 we want to put a class of card we want it to have a blue background so bg primary we want everything to be to the center and uh we're also going to add the class of card form here not dard form card form all right and then inside here let's hit tab and inside here we want to have our card body okay which adds like the padding and stuff and we'll put an h3 we'll say sign up today and let's put a paragraph here and we'll say please fill out this form uh to register underneath that we're going to have our form so we'll put a form tag we don't need an action because it's not going to be something that's actually submitted there's no server side code or anything like that and we'll have a form group inside this first form group we'll just have an input i'm not going to use a label i'm just going to use a placeholder but the inputs we want to have a class of form control which will give it the, that extra padding display it as block and so on make it look good type is text that's good i also want to make it a large input so let's say uh form 
control dash LG. And then let's add a placeholder. And that will just say username. Okay, so that should be our first field. Let's save it and take a look. All right, so it looks good. And then what we can do is just kind of copy this div here with the form group. And let's paste underneath. So we want this is the username. We also want email. We also want password and confirm password. So for the second one, we'll change. We can change the type to email. We can change the placeholder to email. And then this will be type password. Change the placeholder to password. And then this will be, let's say, password for the type. And placeholder will say pass, uh, confirm password. Okay, so those are our fields. Now, underneath the last form group here, let's put our input. And this is going to be the type of submit. Whoops. So the value will say submit. And then I want to add a couple classes to make this button look good. So it'll have BTN and I'm going to give it a, a BTN outline light class. Okay, so remember the outlines they're the they have the border around them. So this will be outline light. And I also want to display it as a block because I want it to go all the way across the container. So let's save that and take a look. And there we go. So that should be it as far as the markup. Now we're going to have to add a little bit of custom CSS for this. Um, so or actually quite a bit because we need the background image. We need the overlay. We need to move things down. So let's go to our style CSS. And let's add some stuff for the home section. So for the initial home section ID, we want this is where we want to hook the background image to. So I'm going to say background URL and in my images folder. I have nothing, so <laughs> I meant to do this in the beginning, but it's fine. We're just going to go to our project images folder that you should have got in the boiler video and loop lab. And then we have four images. So I'm going to just grab these and bring them over to our loop lab project. Paste those in. Okay, and now we'll go back. And the one that we want is the home.jpg. So we're in the CSS folder now. We want to go back one folder into IMG and then we want the home.jpg file. And we're going to add a couple background properties here. So we're going to say background repeat by default. It will repeat. We don't want it to. So we want to say no repeat. We want to say background uh, not blend mode. We want background size and we're going to set that to cover. We want it to cover the whole area and then let's set the background attachment to be fixed. And then for the height, I'm just going to do a min height here of 700 pixels. So let's save that and let's see what we get. So that's what it's going to look like. Now, notice how like the text isn't that readable. The, the image is too light. That's where the overlay comes in. So let's go ahead and add that. So we'll go underneath. We'll say home section and we want to target the dark dash overlay inside of that. And what we want to do here is we want to position this absolute. We want it to basically just cover the entire home section. So we want it to cover its parent div. So if we set it to absolute, we can say we want it to start at the top zero position and also the left zero position. So basically the top left hand corner and then we want it to be a width of 100%. We want it to go all the way across to cover it. And then the height should be the same as its parent, which is 700 pixels, the min height. All right. And then we, for our, to actually get the overlay effect, we can put that right here to actually get that dark effect. We can add a background color. 
we can say background or background color. And we want to use RGBA because we want to be able to use an alpha value, which is basically the opacity, so, so the, the, the transparency of it. Now we want it to be black, so RGBA, red, red, green, blue, we want, whoops, we want all zero values for that to make it black. And then the third, I mean the fourth value is the opacity, which I'm going to set to 0.7. So let's save that and we'll go back. And now you can see that it's darker, okay? And you can make the transparent transparency lighter or darker if you'd like, but I think that that's a that's good right there. All right, now I want to bring everything down obviously. We don't want it behind the fixed nav bar. So, let's do that. Remember we had the home inner class. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll say home section and then we want to target the home inner which is actually a class, not a not an ID. So home section, home inner, and I'm just going to add a padding top of let's say 150 pixels. So we'll save that. And now you can see that it's all moved down. And if we test the responsiveness of this, so once it hits a lar uh, below large, it should just turn into the form. All right. Uh, let's see. We're not seeing the icon here for some reason in the nav bar. We're getting the functionality, but the icon's not there. So let me just check that out real quick. If we go back to our HTML and go up here, I might uh, might have a spelling issue. Let's see. Button class. Um nav bar Let's see, navbar toggler. Oh, it should be toggler icon. Sorry about that, guys. So now let's just test this out. Okay, so now we get the little icon good. All right, so now, uh let's see, what's the next thing we want to do? We want the I want this card form this blue I want it to be a little bit transparent so that we can kind of see through it but not not too much. So what we want to do is in our CSS we're going to target the home section and we want the card form and we'll set the opacity to 0.8. Okay and then another thing we want to do let's save that. And now you can see we can see through it just a little bit. You can see the guy's head right there. Uh but these icons, I want to add a background color to. And I also want to uh well actually I want to change the color of them to this blue and then add a background of a white or uh, yeah, white and we'll add some padding. So let's target that in our CSS. So we'll say home section and it has a class of FAS and let's say color so the color is going to be 008 ed6 which is that light blue and then the background is going to be white and we're going to set a padding of 5 pixels and then a border radius because i want it to be kind of uh rounded so we'll set that to 5 pixels and save and that should be it for this section so let's go back and there we go All right, so in the next video we're going to start to work on the explore section underneath.